Welcome friends, family and loved ones all over the world. It's another beautiful time of fellowship with you and we thank you for tuning in. What a joy it is bringing you today's service from the Dome. It's been four months of this amazing transition to a full online service experience and we can't wait to be back. Thankfully, things are gradually getting back to normal and we trust God to see us through it all. We've got a great lineup of amazing meetings this week and we can't wait to share them with you. We hope you're set to give God some praise. Why not grab your dancing shoes and sing along as we join one music in worship. Before even time began 
of the glory of God, express image of his mercy, yeah. Glory to him, glory to him who has saved us and freed us from sin by his blood. Jesus, the radiance of God, glory of the Father in us. Glory to him, glory to him. us from sin by his blood. Jesus, Jesus, radiance, the radiance of God, glory of the Father in us. Crown you now, we crown you now with worship and
one music for that awesome time of worship. Friends, we understand that some adorable humans have joined today's broadcast. Get ready to show them some love and welcome them specially to today's service. If it's your first time here, please indicate by typing hashtag first timer in the comment section. Our pastors and e-church community are already waiting to show you a bit of our hospitality. We also need you to fill our welcome form so we can know you better. Thank you once again for joining our service and we hope to see more of you. Let the children come unto me, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Your kids are not left out in having a great service experience. The pastors have curated some interesting content, especially for them, and they will definitely have a great time. Please connect to their service via the link displayed and let's have them giggle and smiling even as the word of God is being ministered to them. It's our prayer that they will love the Lord and enjoy his word. Amen. We will love to remind you that our teens church is bubbling as always and their pastors are already joined up for a great service. Please encourage your teens to join their pairs on Instagram at TUG Movement 9.30 a.m. today. My name is Ibrahim Kabiola. Um, I'm a member of the Church of Paul. I came across City Church of Pal in Radisson Hotel, Lagos, Ikeja, 2018. I actually work with the hotel as a director of sales and marketing. Mm -hmm. So City Church of Pal was first my client <laughs> before it became my fellowship, basically. Um, so this, I've been seeing the banner, you know, over and over every Wednesday, and I'm like, oh, TPH is here, that's nice. But, you know, I, I didn't just give it a thought to join. Um, then one particular day, I was just passing by the conferential area and I heard the sound of the keyboard and like I heard a lot of people, you know, praying in tongues and ah, I felt ah, this atmosphere looks, let me just peep. So I opened the door, I peeped and lo and behold, there were just two people praying and I saw in the meeting room more like a crowd and the room. I'm like, wow, this is a place to be. So I stepped back and then I closed the door. I didn't join anyway <laughs> after that experience, but you know, it was more like it said so sown in my in my heart. And I think two months later, I I, I was just led to join one of the meetings. Um, personally, it was a transition period for my husband and I, who were moving from where the church we were to to just find a place where God would lead us to. So the transitioning period was <laughs> was a bit of a troubling period. So that particular day when I joined the fellowship my heart was really heavy so it was Pastor Kebams that was ministering that day and it was more like he x-rayed what I was going through that particular day you know my burden was lifted and I felt ah this is a place to be this is really the place to be so from then it's been a beautiful experience I encouraged my husband to join he joined and then we became a member of TPH. What? In fact this month makes us one year in TPH and I'm grateful to God because it's been an experience One of the beautiful adventures Jesus had when he was on earth was the gift of visiting and staying with people. He modeled the need to belong to a community in such a great way and we can even see the benefits in the lives of those who surrounded him. Our home cell meeting will be holding this evening at 6 p.m. Let's connect with you as a church. It is needful more than ever before to build a strong community, encouraging and praying for one another. If you're yet to join the at one team, please call this number 0816-951-3673 and we will be glad to assist you. Should you at any point in time need someone to talk to or share with, please know that we are here for you. 
Our pastors and counsellors are just a dial away. Please call the numbers displayed and we will reach out to you. We are praying for you ceaselessly. We had such a great time with our dear pastors Benga and Joy Olumurewa last Wednesday as they spoke about courage. What were your light bulb moments with PG and PJ? We hope you're staying with those powerful insights. Fasten your seatbelt as we bring you more this week. You definitely do not want to miss it. Are you a business owner or an entrepreneur in the house? If your answer is yes, we've got exciting news for you. The Marketplace Alliance of the House of Freedom is developing a directory of all SMEs in the house. This directory will be published in a few weeks and will be made available to all members of the house. All registered businesses will be able to enjoy the benefits of free advertising as well as the support of fellow members. Please register through the link displayed on your screen right now. For further inquiries, you can contact us at Marketplace Alliance at thehouseoffreedom.org. Please note that this offer is free and open till the 31st July 2020. Hello everyone. We're all aware that COVID-19 has exacted quite a toll on people globally, but thankfully we are gradually now grappling with prescribed protocols on how and when it would be safe to gather again. And as we do so, our priority must always be the health and safety of the people as we focus on minimizing transmission of the disease. But be assured that this pandemic will pass and we will gather again. We will look back one day and see that God was with us in this difficult time, working out his purposes in our midst for good. Coronavirus only triggered a deeper awareness of the digital world as many churches were already streaming online. Zoom was already in use before the coronavirus. So the lockdown really just pushed us into a better use of existing technology to deliver our timeless message. We must always remember that the mission of preaching the message of the kingdom is unchanging and in every season, especially challenging times like this, our methods must always be flexible. We must keep finding creative ways of building and maintaining strong communities. Through the God Bless Nigeria Church, we have extended our feeding programs beyond our usual communities. And we want to thank all our members and corporate donors for their generous support. As Christians, we must continue to understand the need to make a difference in the larger society. House of Freedom must continue to drive change by creating systems that bring development to individuals, the society, and the world at large. The pandemic has caused us to wrestle with many new questions. How do we run a fully digital church? How do we preach in front of a phone camera? How do we run our small groups online? What do we do about our children? What about weddings, baby dedications, funerals, without physical gatherings? Clearly. The virus has brought major changes into our lives, but it's been a great time of learning how to run a church in difficult times. And we are finding solutions daily to these questions. We are learning to separate what really matters from what is irrelevant. But this season of global uncertainty is actually laced with new opportunities. God is reminding the church that ministry actually extends beyond the walls of the physical location. There is a sick and broken world waiting outside, such that today's world actually presents unusual opportunities for creative ministry. And that's why it is my privilege today to announce that as senior pastor, I intend to pivot into different responsibilities at this time. 
and promotes and encourages new and younger leaders to emerge. I believe God is calling me into an apostolic structure where I will focus more on the work beyond the local church, like a Pentecost outside of the upper room. My new responsibilities would include oversight of our NGO Freedom Foundation and the deeper work with House of Refuge and our addiction medicine program, something so close to my heart. I would also be extending my leadership mandates as an apostle to build a global network of leaders and leadership is also dear and close to my heart. I also intend to devote more time in this coming season to research, writing and publication projects. In line with this new shift, I would like to also announce that Pastor Benga and Pastor Joy Lumerewa and their capable team will now undertake an increased supervisory role as senior pastors over the House of Freedom. And this present house, our flagship, will now be under the stewardship of Pastor Jude and Dr. Mrs. Fejiro Moko. Also working with an emerging team of powerful young leaders, the God Bless Nigeria Church, which has undertaken the majority of our work out there on the field, will now be supervised by Pastor Solomon Akko. And as the House of Freedom continues to expand, I will continue to provide oversight and mentoring to a very capable and extensive pastoral team. Today, church is navigating uncharted waters, but these are very exciting times. And in the spirit of liberty, which our faith espouses, the House of Freedom will continue to focus on spreading the gospel of the kingdom in a variety of creative ways across the world. May God's grace and mercy be continually extended to us all. God bless you. Wow, such a beautiful way to start today's service. Welcome everyone. And we're thankful to God for all that's happening at this present house and all the expressions under the House of Freedom. We bless God for this season of courage in the house and we're confident and pray that the Lord will strengthen all our leaders as they take on this new assignment. Friends, we thank you for your financial support and your donations as we continue to impact our society through our various projects. Giving fills your heart with joy, regardless of how much you give, because the size really doesn't matter. What God loves is a yielded heart that's willing to be a blessing to the body. Well, it's now time for us to give our offerings, tithes and pledges. You can give using the details now showing on your screens. We know that our phones have now been fully advanced in their uses and they've been transformed into our pocket-friendly offering basket. If you encounter any challenges, please call the numbers displayed below and somebody is immediately available to speak with you. And for all that he's done for us, we bring a song of thanksgiving to our King. When I think of the things you have done and the works of your hands, oh, they are too marvelous for words, too marvelous for thoughts. of the Lord. Join me in this
I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. It's time for today's message, and it's a great opportunity for us to welcome Pastor Kemela Okara as he ministers the Word of God into our hearts. Can we pray? Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for another glorious day that you have made. Thank you for bringing us together as one family, joined in one heart, lifting up our hands and our voices unto you. We commit today's service and the speaker into your hands, O oh Lord. We ask, O oh Lord, for an outpouring fresh fire from on high so that you will speak through him, O oh God, and his words will be from your throne of grace. We are expectant, Lord, and we know you will meet each one at the point of our needs. We give you praise, Father. 
because we know you answer prayers. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Hello everyone. It gives me great pleasure today to bring you another message in these very troubled and uncertain times in which we live. But I want to assure you that no matter how the times may look, no matter how things may look because of the times we're living in, and the fact that we now are getting used to this feature of a virtual service, I want to assure you that God is in control. Our lives are anchored in the faith we have in our God. And this is a time when the proof of our faith will be evidenced by the fact that our hearts are anchored in peace and in trusting God. I bring you a message today which I have titled, Trusting God in Troubled Times. Trusting God in troubled times. But before I go into today's message, uh, I want to say one or two things about how I have been spending time in this lockdown period, even though there's been a gradual reopening of the, of the economy and various aspects of life, we know that we're not fully quite there yet. And in the circumstances, we are still in many ways living in a lockdown mode. Now for me, one of the things that has happened is that I have used the time because in my own case, as you know, uh, at the middle of February this year, uh, my time in government as Secretary to Government by Esther State came to an end. And so it has been a wonderful time in many ways, having the last four months as a time of rest, a time to reset, a time to go back to the drawing board, a time to hear God afresh, a time to get fresh strategic direction as to what God would have me do. That's the one wonderful thing. The other thing which I've truly enjoyed in this lockdown time has been a time for preparing the next generation. I have three children, one is 22, one is 14, and one is 13. And more than at any other time, I have found that this has been the most wonderful time to really spend time teaching and nurturing and ensuring that they have the foundation to do great things. Remember the word of God assures us that the children of the righteous shall be mighty upon the face of the earth. And the only way that scripture can come alive is the extent to which we prepare them, the extent to which we build the right kind of foundation in their lives so that they can go on and do the will of God and take things to the very next level. So that's been a wonderful thing I've also found in this time. The third thing which I've truly enjoyed is that it has made me really examine in many ways, my walk with the Holy Spirit. So I have found that the words of Jesus Christ, if you remember Jesus in the book of John chapter 14, he promised us and he said, I will never leave you as orphans. That's what he said. And in times like this, more than at any other time, we need to know for certain that God is on our side. And the way we know that is the assurance of the presence of the Holy Spirit whom we walk with on a daily basis. And so, on my part, with my wife and with my children, we have been learning how to walk with the Holy Spirit in a much closer, more intimate, and in a deeper way, so that our hearts are anchored in the experience of God on a daily basis. Remember also that he said in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 14, that as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. So, that's been our own experience, and I'm trusting God that irrespective of what is going on in your home, with your children, with your family, you are also finding new ways to enjoy God at a deeper level, at a more fruitful level. Because in all seasons, in all times, regardless of what may be happening in the world, our anchor, our hope never fails. It is anchored, it is, it is rooted in the knowledge of God. So I want you to use this period to ensure that you keep building a very strong and sure anchor. As I said, my message today is from the book of Jeremiah, uh, chapter 29. And um, the, the scriptures, which if you remember, I wouldn't read through the entire scriptures, but from verse 1 to verse 13. Now the summary of this particular chapter from verse 1 to 13 of Jeremiah is a letter which Jeremiah wrote to the captives who were in Babylon. At the time Jeremiah wrote this letter, the nation of Israel was in turmoil. There was a great turmoil facing the nation 
because they had been invaded by King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. And out of that invasion, many of them had been taken captive. The best of Israel had been taken captive. The best of the nobles, the best of their young men, their young women, everything that was of value in the temple in Jerusalem, which was burned down, all those things were taken by the captors into Babylon. And so Jeremiah wrote this letter to a people who were in distress, Jeremiah wrote this letter to people who were, as it were, perplexed. Because remember, when Jeremiah wrote to them, there were other prophets in the land who were speaking things that were contrary to what Jeremiah was saying. Jeremiah had said to them, we are surely going to go into captivity. But there were prophets who said to them, no, there's no captivity. There's no problem anywhere. There were many contrary voices to what Jeremiah was saying. But Jeremiah kept saying to them, the nation of Israel is going to go into captivity. But then he wrote this letter and he said to them, even though we are going to be in captivity, it is not for you to worry. It is not for you to be troubled. When you get into the land of captivity, settle down in the land of captivity, build houses, marry wives, marry, marry husbands, raise your children, live normally for in this period of captivity, you must live as normally as possible. Now, when Jeremiah wrote this letter, it would have seemed to the children of Israel, like, how can we live peacefully? How can we live normally? How can we be marrying and, be, and giving our sons and our daughters in marriage in times that are so troubled? We should be preparing ourselves and asking God when this turbulence when this tribulation is going to end so that we can go back to things as normal but jeremiah said to them it is not for you to worry about when things will be normal but in the midst of the problems you are going to face in the midst of the captivity what you are supposed to do is settle down what you're supposed to do is build homes what you're supposed to do is raise your children what you're supposed to do is give your children in marriage and he said in addition pray for the peace of the land now, this seemed to be so contrary. And in the same context, why I bring this message today is that what I sense God is saying to us is that there are troubled times, but settle down in the midst of it. Because one, God is a God of times and seasons. God is a God of times and seasons. So there is a time and a season ordained to every purpose under heaven. And as children of God, we are not troubled by the times and seasons we find ourselves in. We are anchored in our faith, in our sure anchor that never fails, which is our rock, who is Christ Jesus. So we are not troubled. God is a God of times and seasons. And so, just as we are right now, in a time when there is a global pandemic, in a time when economies across the world are failing, in a time when the hearts of many are failing them, we remember that our God is a God of times and seasons. And what troubles others is not meant to trouble us. Why? Because we are anchored in the God in whom we trust. That's one. God is a God of times and seasons. This time and this season has come. But our God was not taken unawares. And likewise, we who anchor our faith in him cannot allow ourselves to be taken unawares. We keep our eyes on the Lord. We keep our faith anchored in him. We keep our hearts strong because the Bible says that they that know their God shall be strong and do great exploits. So we are not moved. We refuse to be moved by what is happening around us. Our faith must stand on failing in times like this. That's number one. Number two, when the children of Israel found themselves in the Babylonian captivity, God gave them a strategy. He said to them, through the prophet Jeremiah, he said to them, settle down in the land in which you are in captivity. Build homes. Be at peace. Pray for the peace of the land in which you find yourselves. Give your daughters in marriage. Give your sons in marriage. In other words, he was saying to them, don't be troubled about captivity. 
I am with you in the midst of your captivity. And that is why you can give your sons in marriage. You can give your daughters in marriage. That is why you can pray for the peace of the land, even though the land in which you find yourself is the land of your captivity. Yet you can pray for the peace of that land. So why was God giving them these strategies? Because his strategy was to preserve them for the time frame within which they were to be in captivity. And therefore he gave them a word to comfort them, to strengthen their hearts. In the same way today, my brothers and sisters, in times like this that we find ourselves in, where there is a global pandemic, where we find many nations, you take for instance, in, in the United States of America, we see a spike in infections. In Nigeria, the reports are still coming out. The federal government recently just announced that our international borders would not be opened until October. So those who thought that by August, things will be back to normal, international travel will resume, find that until October, there is no international travel. Even the local airports have been opened, we still hear that the government may reconsider a lockdown. We live in very troubled times. But what are we meant to do? We are to find for ourselves that place of peace, that place of continuity, that place of normalcy which God ordains for us. So that just as he spoke to the children of Israel in captivity in Babylon, and he said to them, pray for the peace of the land. He said to them, give in marriage and be given in marriage. Settle down, build homes. In the same way, we must, we must at this time live our lives as normally as we can. We can't keep our eyes on the problems. We keep our eyes on God. We go about our business. We build as best as we can. We discover from God strategies to enable us to prosper even in the midst of turbulent times. And that was the core of the message that God was sending to the children of Israel. Prosper in the midst of your turbulence. Be normal in the midst of your turbulence. Do, go about and live life don't keep your eyes on the problems around you. Live normally. I am in charge of the times and seasons. And when the time and the season comes for this to end, it will come to an end. Remember, in the same way, one day Daniel was praying and he understood by the books that the time for the Babylonian captivity was over. And he began to call upon the God of heaven and earth because he knew that that season was over. This too will pass. The question for us will then be, how do we come out of it? Do we come out of it as if we were hard-pressed on every side, as if we were beaten down, as if we were spent, as if we were agonized, or do we come out of it more fruitful, stronger in the Lord, stronger in faith, stronger in hope? Do we come out of it seeing that our God was able to prosper us in the midst of it? That is the test that is going to be before us. Now, why does God, why did God assure the children of Israel in this fashion? If you read Jeremiah 29 from verse 11, in verse 11, God spoke to them. And he said to them, I know the thoughts I think towards you. Thoughts of good, thoughts of peace, and not of evil. That's what he said to them. He said, I know the thoughts I think towards you. Now, pause for a moment and think about the words of God and personalize that to yourself. He says, I know the thoughts I think. That is, even before God has verbalized anything, the thoughts in his mind towards us, what he's thinking towards us, are thoughts of peace and not of evil. So that when we see a lot of evil around us, when we hear the evil reports of people dying around us, we remember that the thoughts that God is thinking towards us are thoughts of peace and not of evil. Then he goes on to say that the thoughts I think towards you are to give you a future and a hope. So here was God. Picture this. Talking to the children of Israel in captivity. Talking to them in a time of perplexity and great pain. And he could say to them, I, my thoughts towards you are thoughts that will give you a hope and a future. That's what I have towards you. We must remember that at this time too. Because like the children of Israel, we're living in perplexing times. If we focus on what is happening, even in, our, in, in, in the politics of our nation right now, 
You can give up because you hear reports of the monumental corruption in NDDC. You hear of EFCC. You hear of the NCTIF. It looks as if there is no direction even in our nation. It looks as if there is no leadership at the helm of affairs in our nation. But what does God say to us? He says, I know the thoughts I think towards you. I know the thoughts I think towards you. And we must anchor ourselves in the truth of God's word. Because the Bible says heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will forever remain. The surest anchor, the ground and pillar of truth that keeps us going, even in the darkest moment, is the truth of God's word. And he says here, I know the thoughts I think towards you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a hope, to give you a future. And so for each one of us, the truth of the matter is that God has a certain hope and a certain future already arranged for us. One of my favorite scriptures is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, where the Bible says, Paul said to the Corinthians that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of men what God has prepared for them who love him. That's what that scripture says. My brothers and sisters, our future is bright, and that is why I have titled this message, Trusting God in Troubled Times. Now, having said that, what did God request of the children of Israel? There are two things he requested of them. He said, one, if you read the same Jeremiah 29, this time verse 12, he said to them, you will call upon me, you will pray to me, and I will listen to you. That's what God said to them. So my charge to us in this time, where we find ourselves in uncertain times, uh, my charge to each and every one of us is God has his ear inclined, waiting to hear the voice of our prayer, waiting for us to align ourselves, waiting for us to call upon him, waiting for us to interact with him, waiting for us to have conversations with him. He says, because in this time, I will listen to your prayer because I need to communicate things to you. How will I best communicate if we don't have a place of interaction, a place of prayer? Brothers and sisters, prayer like never before must be what you do endlessly. Pray in the morning, pray in the afternoon, pray in the evening, pray walking on the road, pray in your home, pray taking a walk, pray with your wife, pray with your children, pray with your brothers. Pray. This is a time for praying without season. Jesus spoke about the woman who went to beseech the judge for justice. And at the end of that story, what did Jesus say? He said, men ought always to pray and not to faint. Brothers and sisters, this is a time to take our prayer to the next level. We must pray like never before. We must call on God, like, not out of panic, not out of fear, but because we want to be so fully aligned with all that he has in store for us. We pray confidently. We pray with our heads lifted up high. We pray with our hearts full of faith. We pray with our voice exultant in faith because we know we are calling upon a God who hears us, who inclines us here, who brings to pass all that we desire of him. That's what he said to them in Jeremiah 29, 12. He says, you will call upon me, you will pray, and I will listen. The final thing Jeremiah said to them in that scripture in verse 13, he says that you will find me when you seek me with what? All of your heart. My brothers and sisters, this is a time when the hearts of men are failing them. Many are failing in their hearts because their hearts are not anchored in seeking God. But we are not of those whose hearts are not anchored in seeking God. More than at any other time, our hearts must be so intertwined with God. And that's why the writer of Proverbs, Solomon said in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, he said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. There is no greater time than now to trust God with all our hearts. We must give him our heart. What was David distinguished for? 
The Bible says that David was a man after God's heart. And that's why David could do great exploits. There is no man or woman who can do great exploits if your heart is not anchored in trusting God. You must trust God. When, when Jesus Christ called Peter to walk on water, Peter looked at Jesus Christ and began to walk on water. The minute he took his eyes off him, he began to sink. Why he took his eyes off him? We must be anchored. Our hearts must be totally anchored. Totally anchored in trusting God. More than at any other time. So my brothers and sisters, I want to assure us what we must do is anchor our hearts in faith. Finally, three things I want to mention before I round up this today, this message. In Proverbs chapter 3, the Lord said to them, speaking through the King, King Solomon, he said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And he said, one, lean not on your own understanding. That's number one. When you trust in the Lord, you have to put aside your own understanding. Many times, our understanding is besieged by what this person is saying, what that person is saying, what the economists are saying, what politicians are doing or not doing, how the pandemic is going to end or not end, how many people are dying or not dying. He says, lean not on your own understanding. Number two, he says, acknowledge the Lord in all your ways. When your heart is troubled, acknowledge the Lord. Everything you hear, bring it back to the Lord. Acknowledge him. And then the final thing he says is, I will direct your paths. I will direct your paths. Brothers and sisters, there is no greater time to anchor our hearts in faith in God than now. Troubled times require us anchoring our hearts in the place of peace. And that's why Paul could write to the Philippians and say to them, Be anxious for nothing, but by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. And the God of all peace will garrison your hearts. I pray that in this season, God will keep garrisoning your heart in faith, in strength, in peace, in comfort, knowing that we all have a hope and a future. Let us pray together. Father, Lord God Almighty, today we take our eyes up to you. You are our God. You have been our help in ages past. You are still our hope for years to come. You are the sure foundation that we are anchored on. You are the rock upon which we are built. Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. And so we lift our eyes to you. You said, trust in me with all your heart. Today we anchor our hearts in faith. You said we should trust you with all our hearts. And we should not lean on our own understanding. In all our ways we acknowledge you. And you will direct our paths into success day by day. That we may know that truly you are the God of the living. You are our God. You are our King. You are the sovereign Lord who sits above the circle of the earth. Who, who looks upon us and gives us our sure anchor of hope. Our sure anchor of a guaranteed future to the glory of your name forever and ever. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Wow. What a mighty message. We bless God for that profound message. Don't forget that there is power in the words that you speak. Speak life into your atmosphere today and ask that God will grant you grace and wisdom to apply the words that you have heard. It's been an amazing service with you all. We thank God for the opportunity to fellowship together again. As you go into this week, we pray that God will go with you and go ahead of you. You will see signs of God's favor, miracles, signs and wonders in your home, miraculous visitations in Jesus' mighty name. We, we wish, wish you all a, a fearless, fearless week. week.
their God Others carry their God But my God is great and He's alive Mountains bow before my God the oceans hear his voice Nothing needs to be Even death can say That my God is great and he's alive Oh, what a mighty God you are You are love and merciful In me, oh, more just to go I don't know just who I gigi But my God is great and he's alive Oh, what a mighty God you are You are love and merciful And me, oh, more just who go I don't know just who I gigi But my God is great and he's alive But my God is great and he's alive